Every disaster movie starts with the government ignoring a scientist. This is an unattributed quote, but it's very relevant. It made me think of the, the movie um, recently on, you know, Don't Look Up. Climate Emergency Forum. We'll be speaking on words of climate wisdom. And there are so many. And we all know, you know, our favorite uh, authors or musicians, even our visual artists who have contributed greatly to our understanding of nature and to the changing of that nature and the impact that we're having on the changing nature so many wonderful words of wisdom. But tonight I'm going to share with you just a few from uh, a book that I've been reading and I, I think I've shared it in other shows. This book is called Night Comes to the Cumberlands and it's by Harry Caudill. And I cannot stress enough how important and foundational this text is in understanding the plight that we're now in when it comes to climate change, and especially as it relates to the coal industry, and especially the coal industry in the United States. And one of the things that he says right at the top of the book is he explains, and I will read this, coal mining is an extractive industry which takes away all and restores nothing. It mars but never beautifies. It corrupts but never purifies. And I just find that so poetic because this book that I'm telling you about, it's, I'm going to call it a biography, a biography of an industry and a biography of a place and how that industry has destroyed a place. You know, Caudill spoke of, of the Eastern Kentucky mountains as wondrous places. You know, they had the hollows with the rivers and beautiful lakes and trees that were hundreds of years old, you take that and add in coal and people who want to, of course, profit from that coal. And then you have this notion that the mountaintops are called overburden and that the best way to access this uh, black gold is to blow off ultimately, the overburden. Now, anything living there, inconsequential. It's the coal seams underneath. And another quote that I found very profound was, uh, he says that unless the Cumberland Plateau is to remain an anchor dragging behind the rest of America, it and the rest of the Southern Appalachians must be rescued while there is yet time. And I found this to be quite profound. So he was writing this book generations ago, uh, late 50s, early 60s. And it's prescient because we didn't rescue the people of the Cumberland Plateau. We didn't strive to educate them. It was much better for people in the East uh, where I'm living to make fun of them, to call them hillbillies, to... Um, buy the mineral rights out from under them and blow up the land around them where they were trying to farm food for their families and just have a bit of sustenance. So we didn't educate. And therefore the only thing that these people had to rely on was mining. And we allowed them to be dragged down by the industry and generation after generation after generation, it's all they know. It's all they know. And of course, we're very angry and we, just don't get how they don't get it. And don't they see what climate change is doing? But you know, all of those decades, it was just fine, fine to use these people and the land. And what was interesting too, yet another quote, was that the mine operators finance a political machine whose toils extended throughout each county and to every office in its courthouse. That is, they used their money, their tremendous profits 
to buy off politicians, to buy off governments, to buy off the United States government. And this is what we see today. And this is why coal mining continues apace. And it is just very, very important to understand the history of extraction in the United States. And I know that we all find this just horrible. And I know Peter does too, because of the death sets related to it. And I want to know what you have to say, maybe not about the things that I quoted, Peter, but, well, what are some of your quotable quotes? Well, well thanks. I, I flipped down my, my list of quotes um, uh, because I've got a couple on coal. And actually, they come from uh, our favorite, renowned, uh, top climate expert, none other than James Hansen. Here's what James Hansen had to say about coal. Coal is the single greatest threat to civilization and all life on our planet. And then we'll probably remember the one in which he said that chief executives of large fossil fuel companies will be put on trial for high crimes against humanity and nature. That got a little bit of media years ago, I should say. He had another one on coal. The trains carrying coal to power plants are death trains. Coal-fired power plants are factories of death. Scientist James Hansen. So I can carry on now with another um, famous American who has turned out somewhat to perhaps our surprise to be a great champion uh, for climate change. And that's Arnold Schwarzenegger. And a couple of quotes from him. I've starred in a lot of science fiction movies. And let me tell you something. Climate change is not science fiction. This is a battle in the real world and it is impacting us now. So for those who don't remember, Arnie was uh, Mr. Terminator. So perhaps that uh, gave him some insight into the terminating aspect of global climate change. Another one, this is bigger than any movie. This is the challenge of our time. And it is our responsibility to leave this world a better place than we found it. But right now we are failing future generations. Hey, Arnie, telling it like it is. So here's the one I was actually going to start with. An atmosphere of that gas would give to our earth a high temperature as if some suppose at one period of its history, the air had mixed with it in a larger proportion than at present, an increased temperature must have necessarily resulted. So I'd never heard of this person. This is the person who actually discovered the greenhouse effect and proved it with a scientific experiment. A lady in America called Eunice Foote in 1856. So it wasn't those two famous British and Scottish gentlemen who actually uh, discovered it. They copied her work. Isn't that interesting? So, of course, at this time that we're going through, it's impossible for me, at least, not to think in terms of uh, climate mitigation and also uh, war and militarized. So one of my little quotes is we need uh, decarbonization and we need demilitarization. So I got one from the Dalai Lama on that aspect. Peace is, I think, the manifestation of human compassion. And, and in my little own quote that I got like decades ago when I was involved in nuclear disarmament, and here we are back in this insanity of nuclear weapons. Peace is the most precious thing in life. I put in a few people who I thought were particularly sources of wisdom for myself preserve and cherish the pale blue dot, the only home we've ever had. And that's Carl Sagan. And, and now one which is pretty famous. One touch of nature makes the whole world kin. That's William Shakespeare. Wow. Those were some powerful quotes, Peter. And I was really taken aback by the ones by Arnold Schwarzenegger. I really appreciate your sharing that. I had not known that he'd become a climate activist. So Paul, Let's hear some of your quotes. Okay, so I'm getting ready for a barrage of uh, quotes here. So 
Earth provides enough to satisfy every man's need, but not every man's greed. And that's Gandhi. When the well is dry, we know the worth of water. Benjamin Franklin. So we just take so many of our resources like water and food and clean air for granted. And when these things no longer provide what they've always provided for us, we notice their difference. We don't recognize and acknowledge it's the importance until it's gone. And then some world leaders have said various things. The world must come together to confront climate change. There is little scientific dispute that if we do nothing, we will face more drought, famine, and mass displacement that will fuel more conflict for decades. And that's Barack Obama, of course, while he was president. Another president said, the preservation of our environment is not a liberal or conservative challenge. It's common sense, said by none other than Ronald Reagan, while president. Climate change is a terrible problem and it absolutely needs to be solved. It deserves to be a huge priority, said Mr. Bill Gates. We simply must do everything we can in our power to slow down global warming before it is too late. The science is clear, the global warming debate is over, said Mr. Arnold Schwarzenegger, which um, Peter has mentioned. We don't have time to sit on our hands as our planet burns. For young people, climate change is bigger than election or re-election. It's life or death. And this was, of course, AOC, the young politician, Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez in the US um, just last year. Another world leader said by polluting the oceans, not mitigating CO2 emissions and destroying our biodiversity, we are killing the planet. Let us face it, there is no planet B. So the whole concept of planet B was talked quite often. I don't know if it was first by France's president, Emmanuel Macron. And uh, I'll just keep going here. I've got some by climate scientists coming up soon, but this is one by Canada's Elizabeth May, leader of the Green Party until recently. I hold a vision of this blue green planet, safe and in balance. At the end of the fossil fuel era, we are emerging to a new reality. We are ready to make the next leap, as momentous as abolishing slavery or giving women the vote. So Elizabeth was talking about how it's an abrupt change in society to get out of the fossil fuel area and get to a clean society. Here's a quote by a billionaire. We are running the most dangerous experiment in history right now which is to see how much carbon we can put into the atmosphere before there is environmental catastrophe. And this is Elon Musk, who's been in the news a lot recently. Here's an older one. What is the use of a house if you haven't got a tolerable planet to put it on? And this is Henry David Thoreau, okay, uh, very famous. Here is uh, one of the top physicists who died not too long ago in the UK. Stephen Hawking, we are in danger of destroying ourselves by our greed and stupidity. We cannot remain looking inwards at ourselves on a small and increasingly polluted and overcrowded planet. So he's hitting on pollution, he's hitting on population explosion, he's hitting on how people have turned inward and are not looking uh, at the collective good of our planet. Climate change is the greatest threat to our existence in our short history on this planet. Nobody's going to buy their way out of its effects. So money is not going to give you a safe place to be. It's not going to last. It's not going to do the effect on a climate change world. And this is Mark Ruffalo who said this. Just got a few more here. This is a very good one, very pithy. Men argue, nature acts. Okay, so we can talk and talk and talk, but nature is continuing. It's doing what it's doing. Nature acts, and this is Voltaire. Another actor, uh, this is not a partisan debate. It's a human one. Clean air and water and a livable climate are inalienable human rights. 
And solving this crisis is not a question of politics, it's our moral obligation. And this is Leonardo DiCaprio, and I think he might have said this in Paris, or I saw him at one of the COP conferences. And of course, Greta, you know, a short comment from Greta. I want you to act as if the house is on fire because it is. I think she said this when she was addressing some uh, world leaders. Thank you so much for that. It's a plethora of quotes and very inspiring and frightening at the same time. Uh, I do want to hear uh, some more quotes from Peter, but one thing that I thought would be good to share was this quote regarding the coal bosses in Kentucky. And Caudill says, theirs was the nearest approach to dictatorship our free society has seen. And these coal bosses, as I said, they bought the politicians. They essentially owned the miners. They owned the homes in which the miners lived. They owned the stores from which the miners purchased food and clothing. And they owned the very coal that heated the miners' homes and uh, allowed them to cook their food. They also prevented them from joining uh, unions. In short, the fossil fuel slash coal industry has been the boogeyman of freedom since it began. And I think it's very important to really, really realize that. They knew, Exxon knew way back in the early 80s that its product was going to do this to the environment. Their own scientists told them they continued anyway. They knew. So Peter, your thoughts and quotes. My favorite short quote is, the burning age is over. And that's from uh, my Julie Johnston, to which I added, or oh, we are. So um, I think that uh, that quote says it all. I did very much enjoy going through some of Greta Thunberg's um, quotes and um, what a wise person. This one I wasn't too familiar with. She gave it when she was invited to address the British Parliament. And she said, the climate crisis is both the easiest and the hardest issue we have ever faced. The easiest because we know what we must do. We must stop the emissions of greenhouse gases, till something that really is not actually out there, people are not aware still that we have to stop. Um, and then she goes on to say the hardest because our current economics is still totally dependent on burning fossil fuels and thereby destroying ecosystems in order to create everlasting economic growth. And everyone in our group can certainly relate to the wisdom and the sense of that one. Then there's the, the, the famous one. Adults keep saying, we owe it to the young people to give them hope, but I do not want your hope. I don't want you to be hopeful. I want you to panic. I want you to feel the fear I feel every day. And then I want you to act. I want you to act as if you would in a crisis. And I want you to act again as if the house is on fire because it is. Fiery words from that young lady. Just great. And then I'm going to go back in time to North America and uh, give you this. The first piece, which is the most important, is that which comes within the souls of people when they realize their relationship, their oneness with the universe and all its powers. That was Black Elk, Lakota Sioux, um, wisdom man. He was alive at the famous uh, General Custer event. So that goes back a long way. One from Albert Camus, peace is the only battle worth waging. Um, I, I got one that I wanna share. Uh, burning fossil fuels today is burning tomorrow's food. That's how I look at it. Certainly now in 2022. I've heard this as an African proverb and I've heard this as a Native American proverb. We don't inherit the earth from our ancestors. We borrow it from our children. I think that is just so fundamental um, uh, to change the, our view of the world. So I just want to finish by saying, yeah, um, Greg's right. Our economics is killing us. We've got to stop it. We've got to change it.
Well, I couldn't agree with you more, Peter. Absolutely. The extraction economy, it enriches a few and it destroys the planet and many hundreds of millions of people and eventually billions. So yeah, we have to change it. Absolutely. So I want to hear some more of your quotes, Paul. Okay, well, Albert Einstein said, the world will not be destroyed by those who do evil, but by those who watch them without doing anything. Okay, so bystanders, people that do evil are not numbered enough to destroy the world, but as long as the public and the community just watch and not stop them, then that possibility exists. And I really like this one from a very famous oceanographer, uh, Sylvia Earle. In fact, they call her her deepness, <laughs> the queen of the ocean, instead of her highness, it's her deepness. Even if you never have the chance to see or touch the ocean, the ocean touches you with every breath you take, every drop of water you drink, every bite you consume. Everyone everywhere is inextricably connected to and utterly dependent upon the existence of the sea. Uh, so that's very, uh, you know, very true, uh, very hard hitting. The future will be green or not at all, said Jonathan Parrott. David Suzuki, one of Canada's favorite environmentalists said, if we pollute the air, water and soil that keep us alive and well and destroy the biodiversity that allows natural systems to function, no amount of money will save us. So people have this idea that their personal wealth will allow them to survive the ravages, but destruction of the environment is complete. It's for everybody. Ernest Hemingway said, the earth is a fine place and worth fighting for. And of course, Greta, Peter has mentioned some of the Greta quotes, so I'm not going to read this whole one, but she was addressing the UN Climate Action Summit in New York City, and she said, this is all wrong. I shouldn't be here. I should be back in school stolen my dreams and my childhood, et cetera, et cetera. And she went on and on and on, very powerful quote, talking to world leaders saying their words were, were empty. A nation that destroys its soils destroys itself. Forests are the lungs of the land, purifying the air, da, da, da. This was FDR talking about soils. And this was the period, I guess, the U.S. had gone through this loss of soils from the Dust Bowl earlier, causing great crisis. Al Gore, many quotes, but one he says, the warnings about global warming have been extremely clear for a long time. We're facing a global climate crisis. It's deepening. We are entering a period of consequences. So that echoes some of Churchill's quotes in World War II about the consequences if the, if the Germans were to win the war. Uh, Noam Chomsky says the general population doesn't know what's happening and it doesn't even know that it doesn't know. <laughs> so, you know, we need an informed public. We need the general population to be educated and informed of the events that are very important to us. There's no such thing as a way. So when you throw something away, it must go somewhere. This is Annie Leonard, the idea of, of we just reuse things up in our society and think we can just throw them away, but they remain part of the environment. Now, I hesitate to give this quote, given the Russian war, but Putin in 2003 said, an increase of two or three degrees wouldn't be so bad for a northern country like Russia. We could spend less on fur coats and the grain harvest would go up. So this is a typical world leader with very, very unformed view, shallow knowledge, and almost making a joke of climate change. Um, every disaster movie starts with the government ignoring a scientist. This is an uh, unattributed quote, but it's very relevant. It made me think of the, the movie um, recently on, you know, don't look up. There's a couple other ones I want to just give um, quickly by climate scientists. So Wally Broker, a very famous uh, glaciologist, he said that climate is an angry beast and we are poking at it with sticks. Okay, I really like that one. He also said that the paleoclimate record uh, shows to us that far from being self-stabilizing, the earth climate system is an ornery beast 
which overreacts even to small nudges. So the idea that the climate is, is always gonna be stable is, is, is not true. Richard Alley, another famous climate scientist, said the ice sheets seem to be shrinking 100 years ahead of schedule. I think he said this a few decades ago. And he also said that the more climate is forced to change, the more likely it is to hit some unforeseen threshold that can trigger quite fast, surprising, and very unpleasant changes. And there are some good uh, quotes from climate scientists. And, and Peter mentioned James Hansen who says it would be immoral to leave young people with the climate system spiraling out of control. And he also said, we're on the precipice of climate system tipping point beyond which there is no redemption. So very aware of these climate tipping points. And I'll just finish off with a Stephen Snyder quote, a climate, another famous climate scientist. Um, he said, Mark Twain had it backwards. Nowadays, everybody is doing something about the weather, but nobody is talking about it. So Twain had a very, uh, you know, uh, had a quote saying, everybody talks about the weather, but not doing something about it. Well, now everybody is changing the weather and not talking about it enough. So I thought that was a good twist. That is a good twist. Uh, it's, it's amazing to me uh, how this planet has existed and evolved as a living, breathing entity. And then Homo sapiens come and just in a few short generations, we destroy a millions, a millions of years worth of work. I want to close with a quote that I find quite beautiful. This is Rachel Carson, and I believe this is uh, the sea around us. And she says, the road, the one less traveled by, offers our last, our only chance to reach a destination that assures the preservation of the earth. And so I suggest that that road less traveled by is instead of wanting and clinging and grabbing and greedily munching away the spoils of the earth that we, as Peter and Paul said, look inward, look for the greater good and how we can live in peace and harmony because this is not it. This is not it. Um, one more quote, Rachel Carson. It's not half so important to know as to feel. And I think that's where our climate ambassadors, not necessarily scientists, but our climate ambassadors can really help this movement because so many of them, so many of us feel what's going on and the ability to convey that, I think can do so much to help other people really grasp the gravity of what we're all doing and seeing in our very lifetimes. So I wanna remind you, we'll put the name of the book in the description, Night Comes to the Cumberlands, Harry Caudill. There's also this book that he wrote, My Land is Dying. It's essentially a picture book of the destruction of Eastern Kentucky. And of course his great writing is included in here as well. If you got something out of this, please share. And if there are other quotes that you would like to share with us, leave them in the comments. We would love to hear quotes that you think would be quotable and that you wish we would have included. Share this video, like, and subscribe, and we look forward to seeing you next time at Climate Emergency Forum.